Did you know it's quite likely that you've been falsely diagnosed with hypertension when in fact you have a perfectly normal blood pressure and you don't need that medication at all? Yep, it's true and I'm gonna explain that in this video and then also tell you some of the most ignorant mistakes made at your doctor's office while checking your blood pressure that could give you a falsely high reading. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's talk about whether you really have high blood pressure or not. It's estimated that millions of people around the world have been falsely diagnosed with high blood pressure by their doctor's office and started on a prescription medication which they don't need, which could be causing side effects that they don't want. So let's talk about blood pressure and really, whether you really have a problem with it or not. The first thing we need to talk about is that there are two schools of thought about what is a normal blood pressure. So the American Heart Association, who receives lots of donations from the big pharma manufacturers, have decided that your blood pressure, in order for you not to be on medication, needs to be less than 120 over 80. Now, many people around the world would have to take one, two, three, or even four different blood pressure medications to get their blood pressure this low. However, the American Academy of Family Physicians, whose recommendations I follow, and several other regulatory bodies have determined that 140 over 90 is the cutoff that you should be worried about. Now, the American Academy of Family Physicians has seen all the research that the American Heart Association has seen. They have access to all that. They've read it all. And they just came out with a new update of their guidelines, and it's still... Anything under 140 over 90 in someone with no other problems is a normal blood pressure. Now, why is that such a big deal and where did the American Academy of Family Physicians get that? So in the past, that was the recommendation from all regulatory bodies. And evidently the American Academy of Family Physicians either is more ethical or perhaps they don't get as many donations from big pharma manufacturers as the American Heart Association. So when you have a falsely low blood pressure goal, like 120 over 80 or less than that, several problems arise. First of all, you're much, much more likely to need pharmaceutical intervention in the form of one, two or three pills for your blood pressure every day to get it down to that falsely low normal level so two things then you have to worry about once you're taking those medications is all of the side effects that could come from taking a blood pressure medication that you don't need. And then the synergistic effects of one medicine plus another, plus even another. When you add multiple medications like that, you don't just add more side effects. You actually multiply the chances that you will have a side effect from those medications. And in many cases, for people taking three or four or more medications, there's literally no research. We have no idea what these medications when mixed inside of your body might cause to happen. And then the second thing you've got to worry about is if your body is perfectly happy with a 139 over 89, and then your doctor following the AHA guidelines gives you one, two, three pills, to lower your blood pressure, that may not be enough blood pressure for you. There's a reason that your kidneys tightly regulate your blood pressure. In many cases, if you have a blockage in an artery somewhere in your body and the pressure gets too low, that could actually cause an, esteem, an ischemic event, either a stroke in the brain, a heart attack in the heart, uh, ischemia in the gut or the kidneys or other organs. Your body knows how much blood pressure it needs to be pumping the blood with. And so anytime you pharmaceutically interfere with that, that could lead to problems. Also, uh, it's very well known in the medical community that if you lower someone's blood pressure too much, it tends to make them lightheaded, dizzy, uh, they have fatigue, they're much more likely to pass out. And as I said earlier, much more likely to have ischemia in organs where you're, otherwise you wouldn't have had that if the blood pressure had been allowed to achieve what your body determines is the normal blood pressure. Another key concept for you to understand thoroughly is that an occasional high blood pressure is meaningless. Unless it's over 200 over 100, 
it really is of no concern whatsoever. If you get into an argument with someone or you're under stress or you didn't sleep well, all these things can make your blood pressure temporarily high. That's not the problem. You do not need a blood pressure pill if your blood pressure was high that one time when Aunt Hilda came over and the whole family got into a huge argument. That's not a reason to take a blood pressure medication. But many people don't understand this, including many doctors. And so if a doctor checks your blood pressure in their office and it's high, even one time, many doctors will knee jerk prescribe you a blood pressure medication and put the, the diagnosis of hypertension in your permanent medical record. So how good are doctor's offices at checking blood pressure? Well, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put you in charge of judging and grading your doctor's office because I'm about to teach you all the things that can be done improperly in a doctor's office while checking blood pressure and tell you how falsely high it can make your blood pressure. And then next time you go see your doctor and they, they rush you back and check your blood pressure, you're gonna have a little checklist either mentally or in your pocket and see how many of these things they do wrong. So now let me give you a scenario. You go to your doctor's office, you're running late, you almost got a ticket, you get in there, you have to fill out 14 pages of forms, you sit there for an hour and a half, and then they call you back and the nurse pops you up on the exam table and didn't you really got to use the restroom pretty bad, but they didn't give you an opportunity for that. Uh, the nurse is asking you questions while she checks your blood pressure uh, through your shirt sleeve. Uh, she's talking to you, asking you questions. It's really cold in that room. Uh, you could stand to be a little warmer. The cuff seems really tight on you. You've, you're a bigger guy and you've got big arms. Now, how many things did your doctor's office just do wrong and how much of an effect did that have on that blood pressure reading that the nurse and the doctor are about to freak out about? They did quite a few things wrong. Let's go through them and I'll tell you how much each one of them could potentially raise your blood pressure. So the first thing that was done improperly is that you were rushed back and thrown up on the exam table. You didn't have any time to calm down, relax, chillax. This is actually how all the research deciding what a normal blood pressure is that's a requirement, okay? Your doctor should bring you to a room and let you sit for 10 minutes in a quiet, dark room and relax. Only then will they get a real blood pressure on you. Uh, if you're stressed, angry, upset, running late, your blood pressure can be up to 50 millimeters of mercury higher than what your actual blood pressure is. So just that one thing alone can make your, your blood pressure 50 points higher or somewhere in that range. The next thing is, is you should always have your blood pressure checked with an empty bladder. So always go and urinate before you get your blood pressure checked. If you have a full bladder when they check it, it can make your blood pressure anywhere from 10 to 20 points higher than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, if you're sitting with your legs crossed or you're sitting on the exam table and your, your feet are dangling and not resting flat on the floor, that can increase your blood pressure from two to eight millimeters of mercury. Uh, for many people, that's the difference alone in whether you have high blood pressure or not. A cup of coffee or three the morning that you're gonna get your blood pressure checked can add anywhere from five to 25 points to your blood pressure reading. And that doesn't mean that you have high blood pressure, it just means that they checked it after you'd had three cups of coffee. That's gonna make your blood pressure temporarily higher, but it does not mean that you have hypertension. The next thing is being cold. If you're just in a really cold room, your blood pressure is gonna falsely be two to 10 points higher than if you were in a nice, comfortable room, uh, room temperature setting. Many, many nurses don't know this. Many, many doctors don't know this. If the nurse is talking to you and you're replying, so she's saying, okay, have you had any new medications, start or stopped? Have you you know, had any recent family? All that stuff's gonna raise your blood pressure by up to 10 millimeters of mercury just by talking while the nurse is checking your blood pressure. How many times has that happened to you in your doctor's office? If the blood pressure cuff that the nurse is using on you is the wrong size, most frequently too small, that can add anywhere from two to 10 points to your blood pressure score falsely. And so make sure that the, the cuff 
size that the nurse picks is the correct size for your arm. So if you have bigger arms and they use the regular size cuff, that's two to 10 points higher right off the bat. Now I mentioned earlier that being stressed, angry, upset, that can add up to 50 points. So if the nurse rushes you back to the exam room and does not give you 10 to 15 minutes of quiet, relaxed time to get back to what is actually your normal blood pressure, that can also add 10 to 50 millimeters of mercury to your blood pressure. Yes. And so I think you can all, I'm not even through with the list and you can already see your doctor's office does many of these things wrong and you may very well be falsely diagnosed with hypertension when you don't actually have hypertension at all. If the nurse checks your blood pressure through your shirt sleeve, or even worse, through your shirt sleeve and your sweater or your coat, that can add anywhere from two, from 10 to 20 false points to your blood pressure reading. And this comes straight from the American Heart Association themselves. So yeah, you've got to take your shirt off in order to get an accurate blood pressure reading. You've got to take your blouse off. Now, obviously many nurses and many doctor's offices, they're busy, you're busy, you don't really wanna get naked unless you have to, but in order to know what your real, actual blood pressure reading is, there should be no clothing between your skin and the blood pressure cuff. Also, if you exercise before you take your blood pressure, uh, within the last 30 minutes, that can add five to 30 points to your blood pressure reading. So you can see with this list that, and then thinking back about past doctor's visits during which you may have been diagnosed, diagnosed with hypertension, they did multiple things wrong. That All the things that they did wrong could have potentially added up to 100 millimeters of mercury to your blood pressure reading. So now let's talk about how to properly check a blood pressure. And what I really want you to do is to buy a blood pressure cuff that checks on your upper arm. And I'm gonna to link to one in the show notes that's available on Amazon. It's very reliable and it's very easy to use. And you can actually check this at home because really uh, your blood pressure at home, that's the number you should really be concerned about. In uh, the European clinics, they seldom even check a blood pressure in the office unless they think that your blood pressure is super, super high they want it checked at home and they'll send you home with a blood pressure cup because that's actually an actual blood pressure reading. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your cuff off of Amazon, you're gonna sit down, relax, chillax, do some deep breathing, maybe turn the lights down for 10 to 15 minutes. And this may seem like a, a lot of rigmarole, but this is how all the research is done to arrive at that 140 over 90 or that 120 over 80 if you believe in the American Heart Association uh, blood pressure fairy. So, but that's where that 140 over 90 came from. Everybody in that research study sat for 10 to 15 minutes in a quiet, dark room. Then they checked their blood pressure. You need to replicate that. And so after you've sat for 10 or 15 minutes and you've really calmed down, then you're gonna check the blood pressure and you're gonna write it down. Roughly 12 hours later, you're gonna repeat that same process. And you're not gonna have any clothing between you and the cuff. You're gonna have an empty bladder. You're gonna be in a nice, comfy room temperature room. You're not gonna be upset, mad, pissed off, upset. You're gonna have slept good the night before because if you get a bad night's sleep, that can raise your blood pressure anywhere from five to 30 points. Yes, and so then you're gonna take that second reading and write that down. You're not gonna chase your blood pressure. If it was higher than you wanted it to be, don't worry about it, write it down and forget it. If you start chasing it and repeating and repeating, that's gonna be stressful and that's gonna make it go up. So don't do that. You're gonna do this once a day for somewhere between seven and 14 days. At the end of that time, you're gonna average up your numbers. That's your actual blood pressure reading, and I can almost guarantee you it's gonna be significantly lower than the number that your doctor got at his or her office. Now, you may have heard of the Cochrane Library. They do uh, systematic analyses of all the different studies, and they come up with rational, common sense answers to questions. And in 2020, they put out their latest blood pressure systematic review, and they said 140 over 90 or less than that, that's a normal blood pressure, regardless of what the American Heart Association says. 
So now thinking over what we've talked about in this video, you may be sitting there thinking, I wonder if I actually have high blood pressure. I mean, they did so many things wrong. It's quite possible that you don't. And so what very often happens to someone is they rushed into the office with a full bladder and their coat on and their feet dangling and they get their blood pressure checked and it's high and the, the doctor then starts them on a blood pressure medication. Then in the future, when they come back in, they're on a blood pressure medication. So their blood pressure is falsely lower than it would be otherwise. And so they think the medication is working when in fact, they don't have high blood pressure at all. This is very frequent, very frequently this happens. And so I really highly encourage you, if you think you've been misdiagnosed with high blood pressure, then buy this good blood pressure cuff and check your blood pressure just exactly as I've given you instructions to do for 14 days, average your numbers up. And if those numbers are well under 140, over 90, you my friend don't have high blood pressure. Congratulations. This is Dr. Barry, I'll see you next time.